Hey guys, it's GTSS, and in this video I'll be showing you how you can get a drop shadow effect in Paint.net very easily and of course for free. So let's get started. The first thing is to download the Paint.net plugin uh, that I have linked in the description. It's called the Vandermotten plugin. It's made by a guy named Chris Vandermotten, and it is incredibly useful. Uh, so go ahead and double click on the install.exe in the zip file. Install whichever plugins you'd like, but obviously the drop shadow one is what we're talking about in this video and how I'm gonna what I'm gonna teach you here uh, but once you're done installing that go ahead and open up paint.net um, and the first thing to do because I got stuck on this a few times is in your layers make a new layer just do that it works way better so in this new layer um, you can really do anything but for the purposes of simplicity here's a rectangle um, then we're gonna go ahead and go into effects object and drop shadow and you'll see that it's a plugin since you have that plugin sign now I tweaked the settings here a little bit, so that's why it looks so funky, but it does look really good if you get the settings properly. So offset X is what, exactly what it sounds like, uh, left or right, how dramatic you want your, your drop shadow. Offset Y is up or down, where you want that shadow going. Widening radius is how wide it is. Uh, really not too complicated here. And then blur radius is how blurred you want the shadow. So here in maximum blur, it really looks like the border of the rectangle is popping out. But if you go back here, you you can't really notice it that well. It seems very close together. I don't like this. I like the blur radius pretty high. Uh, widening radius, I think this looks good. Um, and then you get to pick your color. Obviously, this doesn't really make much sense. Black or white works the best in a, on a white background. There's no point in having a white shadow. Anyway, you can keep original image so you just get the shadow or if you uncheck that you just get the shadow I have not found a use for this but it looks cool and I'm sure there is a use for it but for my purposes I always keep the original image and that's because once you click OK you're done by the way I usually use it for text so if we go ahead and undo all of this and make some text not plagiarizing Adele's song by the way Go ahead and do object drop shadow. And as you can see, it's a little too extreme right now. So we're going to tone everything back just a little bit. And then let's tone back the widening radius. And now I can actually read the text. Again, keep original image seems like the best option. Um, but blur radius, this looks good. Shadow opacity is, again, just how much you want that shadow to actually show it doesn't I think this is a nice subtle effect and you go ahead and click OK and that's your drop shadow it's really easy once you get a drop shadow setting that you like you just go ahead and do control F and it works really well uh, test control F boom it works really well I like it a lot um, but that's pretty much it for this video I hope you learned something if you did be sure to subscribe for more tutorials just like this um, I like paint.net I like talking about paint.net, so be sure to stay tuned to this channel. Uh, I've got more Windows 10 coverage and etc. coming up soon, but thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video.